Okay guys, let's review average rate of change and whether we can describe a function as being odd, even, or neither. So with average rate of change, we are just finding the slope of a secant line if we're considering nonlinear functions. Now remember, they will always give you an interval and you will be given the x1 and the x2. And when we're finding average rate of change, we just need two points. So we have been given the x coordinates of both points. So on our graph, when x is negative four, our output is gonna be negative two. So that's one ordered pair. The other one is when x is negative one, and then our output is seven. So now we are just gonna find the change from negative four, negative two, from that ordered pair to negative one, seven. And when I connect these, we create that secant line. So we're just gonna do rise over run. So I'm gonna count up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have a rise of nine. And then a run of one, two, three. So up nine and to the right three, which reduces to three. Now let's take a look at the other given interval. And we have from zero to two. So let's find those. And let's change this color right quick. Let's use something we can see here against that blue. Okay, so when X is zero, our output is six. And when X is two, our output is negative two. So this time our secret line is negative, it's sloping down. So we're gonna do the rise first, always do the change of the Y. So it's down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So a rock, the rise is negative eight. And then we went over one, two, and that gives us a final answer of negative four. Okay, then when we're given a table of values, we simply, again, just need the two points and our interval is from negative three to negative one. So when X is negative three, our output is 39. And then when X is negative one, our output is 19. And now we're gonna use that slope formula, average rate of change. So let's recall slope. So that's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And so a rock average rate of change over this given interval is going to be 19 minus 39 over negative one minus negative three. So this is going to give us a negative, looks like 20. And then this gives us a positive two. So a final answer of negative 10. Here, the two points, one point starts with zero and other starts with the coordinate value of three. So when X is zero, Y is 12. When X is three, Y is three. So a rock is the change of the Y's, three minus 12, over the change of the X's, three minus zero. We get negative nine over three with a final answer of negative three. Again, remember it just takes two ordered pairs to find our average rate of change. Okay, this time we're given the function equation and so again we are going to need to have our two points so this time we're going to plug in very carefully into our function so i have negative and then x is negative three so i'm going to carefully do order of operations this gives me nine times this negative so negative nine plus twelve plus six so negative nine and 12 is gonna be three and three plus six is nine. Okay, now let's find when we plug in a negative one. So be careful with this one. I'm gonna plug in negative one for X. Then we're gonna do our order of operations. I'm gonna square first to give me right here positive one and then times this negative on the outside. So that's negative one plus four, negative times negative plus six. This is gonna give me three plus six is nine. So now let's do our A rock. And I've already noticed 
at my nines are the same. So I'm just going to double check this. So this was positive nine, that's negative, and negative times negative, that, that is correct. And we bring down this. If we add 12 and 6 first, that gives us 18. And then 18 minus 9, that is correct. This is 1. This gives me 4. That's 10. That's all correct. So here we're going to have 9 minus 9. And then we have negative 1 minus negative 3. So this gives us 0 over 2. So this gives us 0, which this means that this um, the secant line was a horizontal line. It had a slope of 0. Okay, let me erase this, guys. And then we'll do one more. So this time our given interval is from zero to two. So we have zero comma something and two comma something. So plugging in zero is nice because it really just, whoops, forget my four, it wipes everything out, all the terms. So this is zero and this is zero. So we get six, zero comma six. And then we have negative and then we're gonna substitute in two. And so we have a two squared is four times this negative, that's negative four. We have minus eight and plus six. This gives us negative 12 plus six, negative six. So this time, we're going to have the change of, so we have negative 6 minus 6 over 2 minus 0. This is going to give me negative 12 over 2 with negative 6 as our final A rock. So this is how you find the average rate of change from a function. Okay, now let's take a look at odd, even, and neither. Remember when you plug in x and it's negative, if you get the same outcome, then it is even. If you get the opposite outcome, it is odd. If neither of those things occur, it is neither. So I want to test to see if it is even. Well, I'm just going to test it regardless. So I'm going to plug in negative x everywhere I send x. Now I'm going to expand this. So this part gives me negative times negative is positive. Here I have a negative times a negative, that is positive x, and that's 2x, excuse me. Okay, negative times negative. So here I have the exact same term, but I do not here. So this is neither. I didn't get the exact opposite, and I did not get the exact same thing. Okay, one was the same and one was opposite, but both terms either had to be the same as we had originally, or totally opposite, which means it would have been negated on both terms. Okay, let's try this one. We're going to plug in negative x for x. We're going to expand. We're going to collapse it back together. A negative times a negative is positive. And I have the exact same expression, so this is even. Okay, here we have a cubic. I'm going to plug in a negative for the x. I'm going to expand. A negative times negative is positive. Positive times negative is negative. So here I have the opposite x terms, but I have the same. So it's a combination of having the same outcome and the negated, the opposite outcome. So this is neither. Okay, and let's try our last one. We have negative. We're going to plug in a negative x plus 4. A negative times a negative is positive plus 4. So here I got a negative positive. Here, this, this part is the same. This part is different. So this, again, is neither. Okay, now let's take a look at some graphs. Remember, to be even, it needs to be, to be even, it needs to be symmetric to the y-axis. It is not. Um, to be odd, it would be symmetric to the origin. That means if I rotated the graph 180 degrees, 
um, around the origin, I'd end up with the same graph. So this is a neither. On this one, it is not symmetric about the y-axis. If I flip this graph over to quadrant two, there's nothing there. So, um, but it is, if I rotate this around the origin, I get the exact same graph. So this is odd. Number seven, our graph is symmetric to the y. It mirrors, I have the same points on the left side as I do the right side all the way down. Okay, so this is even. And number eight, we have an odd function because it is symmetric about the origin. If I rotate this, my graph looks the same. So I have this point, which is two comma one. And then when I have the negative two, I get the opposite of this one, which is negative one, this point right here. So this is odd. Here we're just looking, let's just check. We're looking for an X and it's opposite and the outcomes. So this is a negative six. This is the total opposite. So this is odd. On this one, if we look at the negative x and x, we can look at the negative threes. We could look at the two, negative two and two. Any pair will work. So let's just stick with negative three and positive three. So I'm looking just at the outcomes and they are the same. So that is even. I hope this helps.